Hey, welcome to Bifocal. Uh, today is part three of a three-part series we've been doing on diet, nutrition, fitness, and training. And today we're going to be talking about kind of the, the mindset that we got to go into when we take on a wellness program like that. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. As I mentioned, this is part three of a three-part series we've been doing. And uh, today is kind of the show I've been waiting for. And it's been a three-part series. And as I mentioned, we've been talking about diet, nutrition. We've been talking about fitness and training and weightlifting. And today we're going to talk about kind of the mind awareness and the mental awareness, the emotional side of how do we stay with a wellness program. So we have Mark Kavinsky back. Mark, welcome back to Bifocal. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, third time back. And we set out, when we set this out, we were going to do a three-part series. Mm -hmm. This is part three. We've talked about this topic today, kind of the, the mental side of this. We, we talked about it in, in the first two shows, and I'll, I'll have references to those shows below. So those of you who want to check that out, you'll see the, the links below. But I've been waiting for this show because I think this is kind of the, I don't know if linchpin's the right word, but this is kind of the, 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 the thing that I think people struggle with. Right. 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 The mental, emotional side. I mean, do you, you, you find that yourself? You agree with that? Yeah. The, the, the mental part of this is um, extremely key and very important with this. And it is, it can be the struggle. This is what's going to make or break you. This yeah. is this part. Yeah. So give me some ideas of, where people fall when it comes back when it comes down to the mental side of things you know what what are the struggles what do they run into i think the biggest thing that a lot of people will run into is uh, the, the self-doubt will kind of start creeping in you're like well sure you wake up one day you're gung-ho i'm going to try this and then there are just other obstacles life sometimes gets in the way and as by nature, we don't like change. We do, we're always changing, but yet we don't like it. And we adapt pretty slowly to it. So when someone comes in and says, okay, well, we're gonna start changing diet and changing the, you know, we're gonna start exercising and being more active. And if it's not part of their daily routine, it's gonna be very hard for them. There's that, there's that challenge because there's a change. It's gonna feel like a, an obstacle or a roadblock. If we kind of make it more gradual, become more of your everyday life, it gets a little easier as well too. But there's a lot of people that it's, They'll try something that they don't see the results right away. Say in two weeks, we want that instant gratification. Ah, this isn't working. I'm going to try something else. Yeah. That doesn't work. I'm going to something else. So we lack patience a lot of times too. And as I try to remind people, for those who are looking to lose 60, 80 pounds, it didn't take two, three weeks to gain that weight. It's surely not going to take two or three weeks to lose that as well either. Well, I think that's a good point. I mean, how, how important is realistic expectations? It's, it's it's absolutely it's key it's is, essential is yes. some of the reason that that we fall short or we quit is because we've set some unrealistic expectations absolutely trying to accomplish too much too fast yes it's exactly what happens so what we'd like to do is break it down in more achievable goals you know instead of saying well my goal is to lose 100 pounds well that great that's fine it's a long-term goal but let's break that down let's get in the increment of let's get that first 10 pounds off then maybe the next 20 and then kind of work, let's break it down. And therefore it's not so insurmountable or realizing I'm never going to achieve that. So you're right. It's setting unrealistic expectations. That's a big, big part yeah. of it. What's realistic and what's un unrealistic? Everybody's different. But what I would say is typically on average, depending if you're male, female, but if you're looking for, you know, that pound and a half to two pounds of weight loss a week, is kind of a nice target zone. You really, you know, initially people will start up a program, oh my gosh, I've lost six pounds the first week. You've lost a lot of water weight as well too. Your body's adjusted, but we don't like to measure results in that one or two week time span. It's more of a four, six, eight weeks. Then I wanna start seeing where things are kind of regulating for yourself because you're gonna have ups and downs. We look at this curve as when we lose weight, which is straight down all the time. It's not gonna be that way. You'll go down, you'll come up. You'll flatline, you'll come down, you'll come up. It's kind of squiggly. And so that's we got to know that. We have to know that going in. You have to understand that expectation, what's going to happen. You're not going to keep dropping, dropping, dropping. Yeah. 
So. You know, one of the things you mentioned on on one of the previous shows, and I think it was uh, I think it was on on uh, the first show we talked about diet and nutrition. Mm -hmm. The one thing you mentioned was no matter what diet you go on, you're going to lose a fair amount of weight real quick. Right. Okay. Right. And I think everyone kind of understands. Well, yeah, if I go on a diet, but you talked a little bit about why. And, and I, I want to talk about this because I think it's a little bit along the same line we're talking about. And you said the reason is because is it shocks your body. Right. It's you a know? shock. It's, it's something new. It's a stimulus to your body is what's yep. happened here. And so, as you just mentioned, we have this big curve because we just lost a bunch of weight, right? Mm -hmm. We've lost a bunch of weight because we probably hit this diet very hard. Yes. Right. I want to ask you a question and you, you let me know if you agree, disagree. Is this a good approach? Okay. If we struggle with this mental side of stand fit, okay, mentally we lose, mentally we get beat up. So we quit. Okay. If I have to accomplish that, and if I have to, if I have to conquer that, why, when I start, do I want to put this unrealistic expectation on me? and hit my diet or even hit my exercise, my training, my fitness set. Why do I want to hit it so hard? Because if I do, this is going to happen, but I'm not going to maintain that. Is there an approach that says, you know what, if you're going to do this for, is this, if this is your new life plan, right. then Let's don't, let's don't lose 10 pounds in the first couple of weeks. Right. And that's the whole point. This is a life adjustment. This isn't, that's why I don't like to use the word diet or something temporarily. This is the way we'd like to adjust you that you can live a longer sustainable. And that's the key that this is sustainable for yourself, that we just don't go gung ho and jump into it. We want you, you know, squatting 300 pounds and benching 200. There's, there, yeah. you'll work up to things like that. And but I want to lose 20 pounds in mm -hmm. 30 days. Yep. That's, that's what we want to do. Times, right. Because it's instant gratification. Sure. We can lose 20 pounds in, in, in 30 days. And after those 30 days, you'll probably put those 20 pounds, if not 22 pounds back on because it's not sustainable the way you're doing it that way. It's, yeah. it's the crash diets that they say, the yo-yo diets, they don't work. It's been proven over and over and over. So sure. <clears throat> you'll start a new diet, a new program. Whether it's one of the popular ones that's out now or just something new you've come up with, it's a change to what your system is. And there'll been. be another new popular one next month. Always. There, there, there will constantly be a new one. There's right. always new ones. So nothing beats slow and steady. That's the pur purpose of this. So mentally, when you're coming into this, you know, you're adjusting your mindset. And again, there's going to be those days where I just don't want to get up. I don't want to exercise. I don't want to eat this. You have those mental hurdles and obstacles that happen to all of us, myself included, everybody. But you get through those and you get the, you know, those, you take it day by day, eventually becomes part of your, your nature where, Hey, I'm eating four five, six times a day. I've got my meals prepped. I'm planned out. I know I'm going to wake up in the morning and <clears throat> maybe go, go for a walk or I'll do my cardio. I'll go to the gym in the morning or maybe in the afternoon or during lunch. You have to make time for yourself. You have to set that. If you're going to make goals, you also have to commit to yourself too. And that's an important piece. A lot of people will, they start that self doubt creeps in. Well, you know, you know, working a lot, family obligations, you know, you know, there's, there's always something stress, right? That's called life. Life is going to constantly happen. You have to put time aside for yourself, the 45 minutes to an hour every day, even four or five days a week. That's time for you. It's not only helps with mental focus and clarity, but allows you to, to obtain some of your goals and to kind of keep in keep on pace with what your yeah. objective is. If you wanted to lose weight, if you have a, again, you know, medically you have to lose weight or if you have a wedding or an event, something coming up, there's gotta be that goal that you're trying to get to, yep. but we have to break that down. So it makes it realistic. So it's attainable that allows you to stay on that path. Yep. I think another point is I'd like to hear, hear what you had to say about it is I think, you know, on the diet nutrition side, even on, I guess on the fitness and training side, we get out of balance one day, two days mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we're, we're ready to throw the towel in. Yep. I've blown it. Right. And, um, if, if we're going about this and it's a new way of life, we have to understand one day isn't, it's not life, right? It's not our whole life, right? Two days. It's not our whole life. Correct. We can, we can stop it and get back on track. Right. 
And I think one of the other things you talked about, and I want to reference again, because I think it's important with the mental side is we talked about having a pig out meal. And, and, and you said meal, I said day, okay? <laughs> but I'm gonna speak to the average person, all right? Day, it's okay. Yeah, the if cheat this is meal my way, is fine. Yeah, once again, you cheat said meal, meal. Yes, I'm saying meals. <laughs> cheat day. But, but I mean, if I have a cheat day, I have a cheat day. Yes. It doesn't ruin what I did for the last three weeks. No. And I think we have to understand that and we can't beat ourselves up. Right, people will do that, they'll have that cheat day, it's like, well, I've already blown my diet. I might as well do it tomorrow and the next day. No, we reel it back in. That's where the importance of a coach comes in as well, too, saying, okay, you know, when you know you're reporting into someone once a week, you know, hey, where are we at? How's the weight? How are we looking? And sometimes before you eat that extra bowl of ice cream or something, like, ah, I got to report in tomorrow. That sometimes is enough to keep people going. Yeah. But you're going to have a day two days, even around the holidays when that comes up, you know, yearly, people are going to eat a little bit more. You've got to be realistic. It's your life. Enjoy it. But you got to also know when to hold, pull it back or when to, okay, enough That's the enough. key. That's yeah. the key. You got to know when. This is the mental when. discipline, the, muscle, the mental fortitude yep. you've got to develop in yourself. Going to go right. to a party. There's going to be food there. Absolutely. Right. If you deprive yourself, it's just not life. Right. 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 You, you, again, you want to enjoy yourself. You want to live healthy, eat healthy. But it's okay if you're at a party to to enjoy yourself. Now, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying to indulge and eat everything that's on, you know fill your plate up three times. But you can enjoy yourself as well too. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. You mentioned about having a, a coach and accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Partner. Tell me a little bit about how you fit into this. How would you help somebody? Right. Where where do you fit? As I mean, you're a coach. Mm -hmm. you, you own Skull Fitness, right? That's what you do. Right. So tell me a little bit about how you would work with somebody. Typically what I work with somebody, if they sign up on a plan, whether it's, you know, a month, three months, six months, a year, there's different packages. But usually I like that three months, six months to really see some results, to really get to work with you. I'd like to get to know you and understand when we first, you know, working together, I'm going to have a question here. I'm going to ask you some questions. I want to know about your you know, your eating habits, your, you know, your, your work ethic, you know, what's your exercise? Do you have experience with that or don't you? What's your pet? I want to know everything about your other health issues. Are there something related? Now, again, I'm not a physician, not a doctor at all, but I need to know where things are at, certain food allergies you may have. I want to get to know you. Then at that point, we start putting a plan together for you. What are your favorite foods? What are your least favorite foods? Because to make this work, you're going to eat what you like to eat still. And I'm not going to say, okay, we're going to you know, broccoli and sauerkraut for the next, you know, three weeks. Nobody's going to eat that. <laughs> so we want to find, I want to find out about I'm you. not. No, <laughs> um, I'm used to chicken and rice, but I love my chicken and rice. So that's perfectly fine. Someone else was like, oh my gosh, if I see chicken again, you know, I don't want, so everyone's different. I have to get to know you. So what happens then is we put a plan together and then there's like a weekly check-in more or less through it's an email, a message. How are we doing? I want you to send me your results each week. I want to see a picture. I want to see your weight. And I'll have like a list of four or five things. Where are we at? What happened? How are you feeling? And then for some, you know, they do like a six month plan a little bit more, maybe once or twice a month. There's an actual, you know, we're going to talk on the phone as well too. How are you doing? Because sometimes you can't convey everything just through text messaging or emails and stuff too. But I want to get to talk to you, get to know you and understand, you know what, again, life gets in the way, you know, stress of work. It's very important for a coach or someone to kind of keep you on track. It's very simple to start slipping off and not even realize it. A week, two weeks, a month, six months goes by and you're like, how did I just, what, what happened here? It happens very quickly. So something that can help make you accountable for yourself, knowing that, hey, I want to see results every week and every Thursday or every Saturday. I'll change it up. I might say report it in four days. You're thinking every seven days, nope, I want to see results or after the weekend. I want to see how you're looking. Because some people feel, oh, I got seven days. I don't have to say anything to Mark for six. So I'm going to eat the first two or three and then try to lose that weight. Nope. I may change it up on you. That's to keep you accountable for yourself. This is for you. It's not for me. My job is as the coach, not only is to help you with diet and nutrition, but the mental fortitude. Yeah. You're going to go through those tough days. You're going to, you know, those, those periods where you can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. That's going to happen. You need someone who's, who can, you know, help you out with that. Yep. How important is, aligning the type of food you're going to eat. I mean, it, it sounds like a, a dumb question, but I don't mean, yeah, you got to eat better foods. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you said 
you're going to give a questionnaire. You're going to ask them, what type of foods do you like? Right. How important is it aligning the types of foods that I can eat? It's very important because you're like, body- if you gave me fish, sure, I'm not going to eat it. Right. If you don't want it, you're like, I don't want to eat fish. Yeah. So how important is that? I think it's, it's crucial to staying on your plan because you may do something again for a week or two. You know, I'm not eating this anymore. I don't like this. My, it doesn't digest well in my body. I don't feel good. I just don't like it. You're just going to jump off the plan. That's the end of it. That's where we're not going to starve you to death either. But I want to find out, okay, of the healthy, nutritious foods, of the vegetables, what do you like? What do you like of, you know, of grains and stuff? You know, do you like rice or quinoa or do you like oatmeal? What are, are you okay with those? What don't you like? You know, of course, everyone's going to say, well, yeah, I like pizza and chips and ice cream. No, put that aside. <laughs> But what types of meats, you know, some people, hey, I'm vegetarian. I don't eat anything, you know, it depends what level. Others are, sure, I love red meat and chicken and fish, and but I don't like ground turkey. Okay, when I'm putting protein options together, they'll say, okay, we're not going to put that type of protein in your diet plan because you're not going to eat it anyway. But you tend to like this one, so we're going to add that. I want to keep the foods in that, A, your, your body's used to, you're aware of, that you like, that you're going to enjoy because it's going to allow you to stay on that nutrition plan much longer. As a coach. How much do you have to be aware of in understanding the food groups and how they work together and how they work with the body? Because there's certain, there certain foods that you probably like to eat at certain times mm-hmm. and certain foods you like to put together and certain fats maybe you like to have in the morning versus the evening. I, I'm guessing, but how important is it for you as a coach to understand food groups and kind of how they all work with the body? It breaks down to really when you go back to nutrition of your macros, of your proteins, your carbohydrates, your fats. Macros are? Macronutrients is that it. That is your protein. There's three macros. There's proteins, carbohydrates, fats. Macronutrients are the larger three major sources. Micronutrients, there's the micros. That's when you get into your multivitamins, your essentials, your, essentials, your you know, um, your, your potassium, magnesium. That, those are your micro uh, nutrients macros are the big three which is you know protein carbs and fats it breaks down different groups within there but we balance off your diet to have a very balanced amount of each one of those every meal we're not going to go high fats in the morning and low carbs at night i like to balance it because it keeps a, a, a very systematic steady metabolism and digestive process in your body we're not going to go and have one big meal a day and then don't eat anything for 12 13 hours that just throws off your metabolism we try to keep it very consistent. So it's very important that we have a balance of all of that within each meal. Now, with that being said, some people prefer to have, you know what, I only like to eat eggs in the morning or I love eggs at night. You can have whatever you want, you know, or you know, it's very interchangeable. I tried to make your diet plan very flexible for you. That's going to work. You want to like, Mark, I don't want to eat chicken three times a day. Okay, once or twice or maybe every other day, then we'll supplement with something else. Do you like a, a, a nice white fish? Do you prefer like a lean a tuna or a, a lean turkey or something? You know, um, is there something if we could throw a protein shake in once in a while? We just want to make sure you're getting the nutrients that you your body requires mm-hmm. to achieve the goal you want to achieve. Yeah. Well, the goal, I mean, the, the whole context here is how do, you, how do you keep somebody mentally engaged into this new way of life? Right. How important is a partner, somebody you're going to do this with? How important is that? That's very important. Sometimes you feel you're alone on an island when you're doing this. But if you have a partner, you know, um, whether it's going to be a spouse or someone you live with or a friend, whoever it is, someone that can, you know, help you. You're going to get through some of those tough times as well. Or when you go to the pantry and you open it up and there's cookies and chips and stuff in there. And that partner is like, no, hey, you know, you're not supposed to do that. Just that little voice in the back of the head as well, too, will help. I think it's very important because that partner can also sabotage you, meaning, why don't we go out and get some ice cream tonight? Let's go to dinner. Let's go do this. Well, I'm trying to stay in my diet. Oh, it's only one. It's only one time. That partner is now sabotaging you. Now, if that partner is going through the same thing you are, wants to train, wants to eat well, go on walks with you, go for bike rides, whatever, that is because that makes this more enjoyable for you then. It allows you to, you know what, I, we're going to go do this together. We're going to the gym together, however that might be. We share the same foods. That makes it a lot easier because there's a, that's a built support system right there. Yeah. What would be two or three things you could share with somebody as far as 
hey, as you enter into this, I'm going to call it a wellness program. Okay. All three of these things. Encompasses it all. Right. Okay. Okay. As you enter into that, we all know the mental side of this is a struggle. What are a couple of things you can just say, right? Bullet points off the bat. Hey, we got to be aware of this right from the start. What are those things? I think you have to be aware of kind of knowing your limitations. Like we talked about earlier is not to overshoot your goals. Say, if you're a person that knows, I, I, I start things, I quit them pretty frequently. You know this, that you're not a someone that, that can be dedicated, committed. You know this. Well, there's going to be a problem right there. So I want you to be dedicated. That's that's a very important thing. So there's, there's a commitment level a commitment. we got to think about at the beginning. That's. Yes, I need you to think about that. I need you to realize that what your goal is and make sure that it's realistic. It's attainable for you. You may have a, a massive goal, like a, an ultimate goal to get to, but to hit the first goal, we want to make sure it's attainable. Can you sit there mentally and think, you know, I can lose that 20 pounds. I can do that. You know, maybe your total is 80, but that, we're breaking this down. Can that make that, is that achievable for you to do? And then again, you're going to have, you're going to have moments where, eh, I, don't, I don't feel good today. I don't want to do this today. That too. But you have to be ready for this. You have to understand you're going to have obstacles. This is going, this is just normal. Life occurrences will happen. So you have to understand that you're going to have a challenge every day. Something's going to come up, but you still have to make that time for yourself to get out of bed or when you, before you go home or after dinner or whatever, you're going to do some kind of cardio. You're going to do some kind of exercise. You're doing something for yourself because it's bettering yourself. So you're going to have obstacles. You're going to have challenges. Expect it. Yep. It's not going to be a smooth, clear ride. You're not going to love your food every single day. And when we have that cheat meal once a week, it allows you that reward. Like, hey, I know on Saturday nights, and Saturdays tend to be a good time for it. I've got that meal. I've worked hard for it, but I've got something coming. And then six days later after that, I'm going to do that again. So that kind of keeps people in sure, line and check. Sure. Well, that's that. That's good. I I, I like how you 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 laid it out because you laid it out pretty high level and pretty um, succinctly. You know, one is um, there is a commitment. Mm -hmm. Understand that going into it. Let's talk about that because if you're not committed, it's not gonna it's not gonna work, mm -hmm. right? So let's talk about that. Are you committed? Two is realistic goals. Right. Let's don't set something that you're not going to hit and then you're you're going to quit because you didn't hit it. And then the, the third one that you mentioned was um, understand and know you're going to have challenges. Mm -hmm. right. So so I, I like what you said there, because if I understand that going into it, then I'm not going to be surprised when one of those hits me. Right. As a coach, you're helping me understand that at the beginning. So I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. It's like, hey, he said that. This is one of the hurdles I'm hitting. I got to get through that. Right. I'm wondering, and I wonder if there's statistics, and maybe you just know from personal experiences, do you get stronger mentally the longer you go? Yes. You do. You do. You will learn. You become more disciplined with yourself. And not only that, but even myself that I've learned and many that I've trained, after doing this for, and I'm not talking a few months, but once you get a year, two years behind you, once you've done this for a while, it's much easier to, yeah, I don't, I don't want to eat that. I don't want that. I'm okay. Because I enjoy what I eat. And then sometimes if I want to have that, you know what, I'm going to go off the rails today. I'm going to eat something that I normally don't eat. Taco Bell, whatever it might be, for example. Boy, that, that tastes good when I first eat it. But man, 20 minutes later, it doesn't feel good in my stomach. Why did I do that? I'm not doing that again. And you learn over that time, you're like, I really don't need that food. Not for that 30 seconds, that gratification. Don't need it. Or you'll learn to portion control better. You know what? Sometimes if I have a taste for like an Oreo cookie, I know how to just take one, eat it. Great. That cured my craving. I don't have to eat the whole sleeve of cookies. You learn that. You're like, your body was craving something. I want a scoop of peanut butter. No, okay, I'll have a scoop, but I'm not going to eat the whole jar of peanut butter. It was just enough. You will learn You learn that as time goes by. You get. You definitely get mentally stronger. Not only will you get physically stronger because of you know exercising more and toning up the muscles, but you will mentally get stronger as well too. Do our taste buds change? Do we lose uh, uh, a desire for a certain taste? You know, I've heard people say, I've given up pop. I've given up soda. And then after a while, they just 
they really don't have that desire anymore for it. Mm -hmm. Do you have much experience of, of that? Do that we does happen. Yes, it does. And you may crave foods more, but then after a while, you're like, I don't crave them as much. I don't crave the foods that are salty, for example. Um, I definitely was never a sweets person, you know, candy and stuff too. I don't crave that. Uh, other people have to have pop all the time, you know, have a soda. So I will tell them, do a diet one, do a diet Coke, for example. Like, well, am I allowed to do that? Absolutely, you can do that. You know, I'm not going to have you drink six of them a day, but you're allowed. If that still cures that itch where I still like to have that craving, go right ahead. But your taste buds will probably alter a little bit. What will happen, though, too, is when you're – sometimes your diet gets kind of bland, and I try not to keep it bland. I like to spice things up for people and throw spices on the foods and kind of change it up, throw some vegetables. But then when you really taste something that has flavor, you're almost kind of clearing your palate – after a while, then when you're having a, a great juicy steak, for example, or a very well-cooked meal, your taste buds just feel that. And you can like, wow, that was, you really appreciate like really good cooked food. You really do like homemade meals, you know, um, natural foods. When you start tasting that and like, wow, this is really good. Then compare it to a processed food and then go back, you know, well, it does. Great example would be is when I go on vacation, you know, We'll go out of the country or something like that to go to an all-inclusive and eat whatever you want. And I enjoy myself and I'll eat. Three, four days into it, my body's like, I, I miss my regular meals at home. I do. I miss that. My chicken and rice and oatmeal and sweet potatoes. And then when I come home, it's almost like a um, comfort food again. I come back and I'm like, oh, yeah, that feels. Then my body starts regulating again. Even my body feels better because it's on the foods that it's used to. It's acclimated. And I don't need to adjust to it. And people are like, how do you eat the same thing all the time? I can change up all I want. I just know what works for me. And every, same thing for other people. You'll learn to know what food works better for you. And you'll you'll go back to those foods. Because how long did it take you to figure that out? It was probably a good year, year and a half when it really set in. But that really takes a good year. Some people take less. But for your body to really acclimate and adjust, you know, it will. Your body's a wonderful mechanism machine. It will adjust and acclimate, but it's not going to happen in two weeks. It'll take some time for that to happen. But everyone will experience something a little bit differently, though. So it's not across the board, hey, your taste buds are going to change. You will have cravings for things you have cravings for. Yeah. You know, uh, getting back to something we talked about a little bit earlier. I mean, you've been at this for a long time. We mm -hmm. talked about it in one of the, the earlier shows. Um, you kind of gave a little bit of the story of how you got in this, but you've been at this for years now, yeah. right? What are mental things you struggle with? I mean, you've been at this. So what I would consider you a professional mm -hmm. at this. Do you still struggle? Yes. You I do struggle. struggle. Absolutely, I'll struggle. What do you struggle with? I struggle with, for me, when the seasons change. In the summertime, when it's lighter outside, it's warmer, I have more pep in my step. I bounce like most of us because this is a mental thing too. Great. I, you know, the weather's warm. I'm great. As we approach the winter months, it gets darker earlier. It gets a little colder. Wake up, you know, try and get out of bed in the morning at the same time. Now the sun isn't up anymore. It's like, oh, God, I got to get up and go through today. We all go through that. It's normal. But I learned to myself is because I set goals for myself all the time. If I want to achieve that goal, if I want to get to that point, there's no day off. That's This is me, though. I'm, I'm very dedicated like that. There's no day off for that. Get up, get done. Because once I get started and get moving, and whether I'm going on the, the treadmill in the basement, I'm going to the gym, 10, 15 minutes into it, all of a sudden, boy, I'm glad I did this. I feel great now because I've released the endorphins in my body, my mind, the blood's flowing. Now I'm glad I did this. It's that first getting up to do it. And I struggle with that sometimes. There are days when we had the lockdown months ago. I was able to make like a home gym, basically. <laughs> Whatever free weights I had stuff too. That was one of the more difficult times because here after work, I can go sit on the couch, put the TV on, sit there, and then look over. I got to go work out. Now, for me to get up and drive to the gym was much easier then walking over 25 feet to the other room and pick up a couple weights. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. That was a struggle. I'm total opposite. But right, everyone's different. But see, I did it every day because I had a show. I had to prep for a show. Like, that was my goal. Other people, like you said, boy, they'd rather just go to their garage or basement, get their workout done, come up the stairs and done, as opposed to get in the car, driving across town. I like that as I'm driving to the gym, that gives me that seven or eight, 10 minutes to focus. This is what my workout is today. These are the exercises I'm going to do. I start, as I'm driving, I'm now putting my workout plan together for the day. So when I get there, I'm ready. I'm, I'm set to go. 
I use the analogy of um, a three-legged stool, mm -hmm. you know, and it happens to work very well for this three-part series that we're doing, right? And we mentioned this three-part series. Part one, we did, as we mentioned, diet, nutrition, and that's kind of one leg of the stool. The other leg of the stool is this fitness and training, right? Working out. Mm -hmm. And then that's the second leg. The third leg is what we're talking about now. It's kind of the mental side, the emotional side, staying on top of it. It's three legs, right? As a stool, if we removed one of those legs, we can't use the, we, we would fall. Right, you're going to fall. Right. Or even if one of those legs uh, isn't holding its own, it becomes shorter. Well, now we're we're kind of tilted, right? Yeah. So it's it's out of balance. So all three are important. Yes, all three have to synergistically work together. We got to work together. Yes. You mentioned a couple things though, and and I want to I want to hang on you a little bit if okay. I can. Okay. A couple things I think are, that were interesting. You mentioned that you might struggle getting up in the morning when the clock changes, right? But you said, if I can do it. After I make that decision, I'm okay. Yes. But I got to do it. I think that's interesting. And I, the reason I, 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 I want to go there is because I, I do that too. Okay. And I'm right now with the clock changing. I mean, prior to the, the time changing and everything, I was up every morning at six o'clock. I didn't even just set the alarm. It was just phew, clockwork. Yep. All right. Now it's 6 30, 25 to 7. Yep. <laughs> and I'm rolling over and look. And I'm actually doing that now. Yes. Okay. But if we can understand, hey, that's normal. Get your step out of bed, get your foot out of bed. Because once your foot hits the floor, routine starts taking yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Right? Become, you want it to become a habit. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's that first step. And uh, so it was interesting to hear you say, hey, I, I still struggle sure. with that, right? Because I think we all do. So I think regardless of what leg we're struggling with, take the step, get it going, right? right? If you open the refrigerator and you're thinking, man, I'd like that, close it. That's the step, close it. Right. Get out of here. It Grab happens. an apple. Right. Whether you're brand new at this and starting off or you've been a seasoned veteran doing this for 25, 30 years, we're all human. We go through the same thing, same emotions as well. There's no difference. So. Yeah. It's the same way. Well, you also mentioned goals mm -hmm. and you said, you know, if you're trying to hit your goal, what does somebody like you, what kind of goals do you have? I mean, somebody could look at you and say, well, it kind of looks like you're there. Looks like, don't you just go through every day and just kind of maintain what I mean, like goals? What are your goals? I have, I believe it or not, I have plenty. I, I, like, I'm one of those people will look at myself thinking it's not even near a finished product. There's always work to be done. And because you're, you're relating it to the bodybuilding yes, side? Yes, because I, okay. I do competitive bodybuilding. So as I climb the ladder and get between regional, more national shows, my goal is to you know, work to get my IFBB pro card at my age as well, too. That's, a big, that's my big ultimate goal. Once you get to that pro level card, but basically you win a pro show at a national level, you know, um, and based on my age group as well too. So that's a big, um, a big motivational factor for me. And what motivates me sometimes are those days when I'm not like feeling it or I don't want to go to the gym. I always will say that person I'm going to compete against, whether next year, or the year after isn't taking those days off. Why am I taking the day off? That's what motivates me because my competition isn't taking that day off. But I also motivate myself is I'm responsible for myself. And if I don't do it, I'm only letting myself down. I'm not letting anybody else down. It's myself. And so that helps. I'm very self-motivated. And when I start something, I will finish it. And I will work as hard as I have to to do that. I'm lucky that I have that ability to do that. But I also like to be able to turn around and help other people. You can do this too. We can get you there. We'll work together, whatever it takes. But I do have goals. And I will, when I look at pictures and stuff and poses that I'll do, I'm like, oh, the, you know, there's not a balance in my shoulders, my arms, my legs have to come up a little bit more. I have to tighten this up here. I have to get my back, you know, a little wider. There's always something I'm doing. And these things take months and years to develop, but I, I know that. And then, you know, critically, when I have a judge or someone looking at some of my poses and they're like, hey, Mark, you want to do this here? You want to fix this? You want to bring your chest up? You want to, you know, don't concentrate on your, your lats as much, you know, you know, don't. Okay, so then I, I take that criticism and I build upon that. So those, but the, I have those goals. Sure. Now, other people aren't going to have such lofty goals, but they just want to get fit, look good, feel good. 
again, achievable goals that you can get there. Once you get there, you need to maintain that now too. Do you still fail? Absolutely. You do still fail. I, I believe failure, the failure is not starting. The failure is not trying. You're failing if you don't do anything. It's not failing if, you know, you gave it your best shot, didn't work out. You tried, at least you tried. And everybody that does that, I give everybody credit to do that. But I still fail. I will fail if I'm trying a new routine or I'm trying, you know, I alter my diet a little bit. I want to try this, see if this does, that didn't work. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that again. I'll try something when, you know, a different type of, of cardio or whatever. Even if it's out of that realm, even in my life in general, in my daily life, my work life, my family life, I try there's always going to be failures, but that's how we learn. That's how we grow. The moment you stop that, it's the moment you stop growing. Yeah. Interesting point because failure is nothing more than failure. It becomes really big if that's where we stop. Yes. And you're saying, hey, we're all going to fail. Right. Right. We all got these three-legged stool. We can have a three-legged stool for this diet, nutrition, fitness, and mental well-being. We can have a three-legged stool for our home life. We can have th- right. Well, if any of those get out of balance, it's not failure. It's only failure if we allow it to stay out of balance, right? right? So it's, we just got to get it back on track. Right. You right? fix it. Fix it. Mm-hmm. Fix it. Well, it's interesting to hear you say, hey, I, you know, I've been at this a long time, but I still struggle with this stuff like anybody else does, right? But even if we're not doing this, this being diet and fitness, right? We got other things in our life that we're, we're struggling with. If I'm not exercising, I'm probably struggling with, I probably should be, right? Right. If I'm not eating right, all right, and I'm sitting down and I got that big pizza and a bowl of chips, there's times I'm saying, I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't be doing this. (laughs) So we're struggling regardless. Right. This is the mental struggle. You're going to go through this. So whether I'm on the good side of the fence or the bad side, I am struggling. Yes. Right. So if I'm going to struggle, I may as well struggle where I'm going to get some positive results, right? I, I guess that's maybe a simplistic way to look at it. But if I'm going to struggle, let me struggle where I'm going to benefit from and not where I'm going to beat myself up over it. Right. Yeah. So what advice could you give somebody? Somebody says, you know, hey, I'm in, I've watched all three of your series, Mark. I'm in. Where does somebody start? Well, if... First of all, if you're interested in having me help you out, there's ways to contact me either through, um, uh, you can email me at mark at skullfitness.pro. I have a Facebook page and also have a web page at um, skullfitness.pro. You can reach me all through those ways. Um, and more than happy just to engage and talk, you know, send an email, however it is, just to say, hey, Mark, I'm thinking about this. What do you think? I'm just kind of kicking the tires on this. I, I really want to get into something. I will help you. I will talk with you as well. And if you've got someone, you know, uh, local to you, someone in the family or or another trainer that, you know, you want to work with, by all means, you do that. But to get started, you have to make that commitment to yourself. And there's in my tagline with Skull Fitness, I have three words. It's initiate, dedicate, achieve. And those three are very powerful words. One is to initiate. That's to get yourself started. It's taking that first step initiating, whether you're contacting me, going to the gym, changing your diet, it's initiation. The second is dedicate. You're now going to dedicate yourself. You're going to commit yourself to get to that goal you want to achieve. And that brings you to the third one, which is achieve. So you initiate it, you initiate your plan, you dedicate yourself to that plan to then achieve your plan. So I, those are those three words alone pretty much sum up everything for you. So someone wants to come up, Mark, how do I get started? We sit down there, we're going to have a conversation and we're going to ask, okay, what are your goals? First thing I'm going to ask you is what are your goals? Why do you want to do this? What what are you trying to achieve at the end here? Then we start breaking it down. Okay, look at your diet. I want to know what what you've been eating so far, where you're going to go. Training, have you done training or not? What's your level of experience with that? Again, then we start putting things together for you. And then we're like, okay, now we're going to make something that's going to be achievable. And then I'm going to stay on you. And my job is to stay on your butt and keep you going. Um, but even if you just want to do it yourself, want to be self-motivated, again, you have to initiate this yourself. You have to realize what we talked about in other shows is there's that trigger. There's going to be an event or something that's going to trigger you like, that's it, no more. I'm tired of it. I don't want to live this way anymore, whether it's something health-related, 
or just something looking in the mirror or that bathing suit didn't fit the way it used to from 10 years ago. That photo from last year. Yep. At the Christmas party, like something's going to trigger you and you're like, I've had enough. And once you've reached that point, now I've got you. Now you're going to dedicate yourself because that's the way it was. You're not going to be like that anymore. We're not going down that path anymore. And we're going to reinvent yourself. I, I like your, um, I like your tagline. Mm -hmm. I like it. Initiate, dedicate, achieve. I mean, that's very appropriate. Very, very appropriate. Is there a certain demographic of person you work with or can it be? It can be any anybody. Anywhere from, I've helped them some, some kids <clears throat> just with their diet and eating habits, the teenagers and kids in high school and sports up to, you know, male and female, you know, up those in their thirties and forties up to their, you know, sixties and seventies as well too, because it changes, you know, there's different requirements based on your age, you know, male, female, but your requirements from a 22 year old to a 52 year old, completely different dietary, also exercise plans as well too. I'm not going to put you on a 10 mile a day walk. If you're 70 years old, unless you can do it, then God bless you. That's wonderful. We'll work up to that. You're 21, 22, and you're younger, you're a little more in shape. We can work up to that a little more quickly. So it's it's going to change or how your your metabolism could be a little bit different, you know, at an older age as it is to a younger age as well, too. So we have to keep that in consideration. And that's why, again, I like to find out about you first, about your your dietary habits, your exercise habits, your living habits, because that's going to help me steer. OK, this is how quickly we can get you there or how long this is going to take to get you there. Very good. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming in. We set out to do three. We, we got three done here, and uh, I, I've learned a lot from it. And uh, so I appreciate you coming in. Well, we'll have to have you back. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate this, yeah, too. Yeah, this has been good. Hey, thanks for uh, tuning in. And th there's links down below for the first two, uh, first two shows. Watch them. Watch them in their entirety. Uh, and as Mark said, reach out to him, SkullFitness.Pro's his website, reach out to him. He would love to hear from you. He works with people from all ages, male, female, high school, all the way up into the senior. So reach out to him. Hey, thanks for li listening in. Uh, if you like shows like this, hit subscribe. We'd like to hear from you. If there's shows you would like to see, reach out to me, dharshdanharsh.com. I would like to hear from you. We'll get a show like that on the docket. Thanks for tuning in today, and we look forward to seeing you again. Stay tuned.